dreams that we got pursue. I mean, we all got dreams that we got believe in. I mean, we all got targets that we got achieve. So how can I rest when I got family to feed? I mean, with my intuition, I'll make wise decision. I'll navigate the chaos and avoid collision. Stick to the program and follow my vision. I'm just trying to keep it real. I got a legacy to build. Yo, I do it for my brothers, do it for my future son. We were just on block life, but look what we become. Yo, 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 yo. It's your boy HU and Tizzy, and we're back again. It's the Golden Era UK rap podcast. Can I get a round of applause? Hey, hey! Hey, hey! I'm signing it! Yeah, make sure that the energy is always correct and always up. I hope everyone at home is good. Um, yeah, it's the golden era. But before we get into like what we normally do and what you're here, why you click the button to watch and hear, let's do the due diligence. Yeah. So big up um Chancey T A W on visuals, yeah. Uh big up Consume London, yeah. The link's down below. Um big up um Kofi's Kitchen, yeah, big up no invite music, big up Stashbox, um, big up well gone. Well gone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what we do. You know what I'm saying? The due diligence, we like pay our respects to the people that's making things happen. All right, it's the golden era. Let's get like down to what we need to do. You get what I'm saying? And bef- in fact, in fact, hold on, cuz. Before we even do that, let's hit them with a who said. And shout out Tug Movements Studio. Come on, Because we made it look like the golden era. Hey, hey, guys, <laughs> shit, come on, man. Turn you know up I mean? today. It's the golden era studio today. <laughs> yeah, come Can on, see cause cause where, wherever we are, <laughs> wherever as we long are. as the One conversation, yeah, straight. wherever the conversation is, straight. it's golden era, you know exactly. what I'm saying, isn't it? Come on. But who said for the people at home, yeah? Um, d- yeah. Internet murderers with no burners. My younger slapped the ting like Ike Turner. Don't you know we like beef with a nice burger? Big Mac with extra treat. Extra cheese, get your lights turned off. Who said that bar? Is that for me to answer? No, 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 no. Okay. It's not for you. It's okay. not for you, guys. Right. The people at home, you know what I'm saying, innit? All like, right. everyone just looks. Yeah, but you lots at home should know that. Like, yeah, it's the golden era. All right, so let's get into this. Um, Series one, mm-hmm. yeah. I, like, I had a little camera, okay? I was trying to ting. Like, I hollered at my friends that happened to do great things in music to ask them for favours, innit? They came on the podcast, yeah? It built. That series went to series two. I tried to monetize. They right. started giving me some, like, jargon on the YouTube. I didn't know what to do, so I took series one down. So right. all of the people, my friends... You were telling me, I remember, ...that yeah. came and helped mm-hmm. me out, mm-hmm. all of their... Series is down. So my mission on top of doing the golden era is to get the people from series one back. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's bare gems in that. But at the same time, I was just starting and I didn't fully know. Do you know what I'm saying? We learn every day. We never stop learning. You know what I'm saying? It was more of a freestyle thing. Now I've got more of a (coughs) strap, a a pattern. You know what I'm saying? That I ask most of the people. So do you know what I mean? Like, and like, not only are you my friend, Respect it's like, bro. yeah, the history that you've got behind you, like, as a musician, a character, just as a real person, Thank you. is immense. So it's only right that you're sitting in the golden era seat no, respect, and we just go through and chop it up yeah, definitely. about the past. Do you get what definitely, I'm saying? Isn't it? Like definitely. the path and that. Yeah, so w- without me waffling on too much, you know what I'm saying? Because I do that every week. No, this is, this is, this is, this is, what, this is what your show's about. We want to hear what you got to say and that's why we Come love on to your show, about, man. Come like, on. And you know what? You, you always show me love and we, we never change. That's what I'm saying. You know, we never change you know I mean? throughout the years from before. It's always been the same. Yeah, before. it's always been the same. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So without further ado, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. You done now in the building, tug of war, AK, tuggy, tuggy, AK, nyang bass. Let me say, hey, hey, I'm the richest me, I got for. Oh, sign me there. Them now swing off, you can catch my foot on the camera. 
I'm swinging my foot right now. Come on, fam. You get me? Didn't nah, I swing my foot? Nah, it's a pleasure to be Come here, on, bro, cash, man. man. It's history. Hunt. You know what I'm saying? You get me? Legendary. History. History. Yeah. History. Real history. So, Real like, history. all right. Cause... Stoke Newton, Hackney. Come on, fam. N60. Come on, fam. Alba. From Highbury Grove. From Highbury Grove. We'll get into all of that. Yeah, I'll get into that in a minute. Real talk. All right, cuz. So, listen to this now, yeah? Because I even remember from the first one. Yeah. I asked you this question and like the answer refreshed my mind. I did know that then, right. but I didn't know it when you was explaining it. <coughs> but it was just mm. something that I thought, oh, no one doesn't know this. And I know I'm the only one with this information. That's, do you understand? That's right. even thinking to ask you. Mm -hmm. So let's start it off with this now. Your name meaning. Okay. My name How mean. did you get this name? What does it mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I... Right, let's break it down. He was in Highbury Grove. We were in Highbury Grove. I was yeah. in uh, Richmond in Highbury Grove. Yeah. And my class, we had bare stars in my class. We had bare, like, uh, big up Ricky Blur. Like, okay. Ricky Blur okay. is, like, very successful now. Yes, yes. Like, all love to Ricky. I'm very proud of everything he's done. And, um, sorry, oh, I was looking for something. Yeah, I was, he's done amazing. You had Iceberg Slim. Iceberg Slim. Who was an amazing artist. So big up Iceberg Slim. He's gone into do loads of great other businesses as well mm -hmm. after music and yeah. um, loads of people. So our class was like full of stars in the making, myself, mm -hmm. there's other people that I can't think if I forget a name, forgive me. Like it was like uh, DJs, a lot of selectors, yeah. MCs, artists Fo in the making. Yeah, in my, like yeah in, my, in, my, in my class, in my actual class. So we all was, because we were in school together, we was all naming each other. So at the mm. time, we was watching like WWF, which is called now, the rest of it was called WWE. -E. Yeah. They changed the F to yeah, E. Yeah. So it was called WWF at the time. The Federation. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, and we was, we was all into that. So a lot of us in the class would kind of like pretend to pick our favorite character from WWF. Okay, the wrestlers. Yeah. So um, <laughs> my favorite, because I was big in Smith, I was big in Ivy Gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, um, Tugboat was the big, remember Tugboat? Yeah, 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 and Earthquake. Yeah, and Earthquake. The earthquake was disasters. massive, but Earthquake was massive. <laughs> so I was like, nah, he's too big, but Tugboat <laughs> looks like, he's coming to me like, dude, dude, dude. So I was the like, all right. Line, isn't it? Yeah, so a couple of men, like, were doing, they were the bushwhackers. So we were like the characters in the, in the class. So I was Tugboat. So being Tugboat just turned into my MC name. Yeah. MC Tugboat. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? That's my yeah. first MC yeah. name when I was starting MC into Jungle. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Paint a picture for us. Like, what was, what was the music and... Yeah, well, I, mean? I, I grew up influenced by hip-hop. I grew up listening to hip-hop and dancehall what all year, my life. What years are we talking about as well? Oh, wow. I can't remember the exact year, but I'm talking about when I'm... Um, I started writing lyrics from, like, 14 years old. So I could imagine being called MC Tugboat from about 14, 13... Something mm. like that. By the time I got to 16... In school days. In like, school days, yes. school days. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was writing okay. lyrics from 13, 14 years old in school. Mm. I'd have books and books of lyrics in school, facts. And I was called MC Tugboat. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got to 16, mm. I started going on pirate radio stations and that. Mm -hmm. And I think my first, my first probably one or two pirate radio shows, that was probably MC Tugboat. After, after they hear me on the microphone, because, you know, I'm very aggressive... Yeah. Like after they heard my aggression, mm. I've been like that from young. I've been like, yeah. like you know what I mean? So yeah. I've always had that aggression. And they said, it's like, oh, you're trying to, it's like you're trying to war people. Yeah. Like, okay. There is. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's aggressive lyrics, yeah, so isn't it? Yeah. Tugboat turned into Tugger anyway, because the boat kind of dropped off. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it just yeah. turned into Tugger. So he was called MC Tugger. Okay. And because of the aggression, now it's, like, oh, it's all you're trying to war people. Tugger. It's like warring on the okay. match. It's Tugger war. Okay. So people thought, is it because you know you got the game tug of war with the two with the rope? And, yeah, yeah. No, it's nothing to do with the <laughs> game. Nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with the game, no. So it was like the original game was tugboat turned into MC Tugger, and because of the aggression, um, some friends they started calling me MC Tug of War because of the warring vibes yeah. I had from yeah. when I started on the microphone. Okay, so uh, what music was you like listening to at the time? Like, what was your influences? Oh, I grew up listening to reggae and hip hop. It's my main yeah. influence. That's your yeah. main influence. Reggae and hip hop. So give yeah. us like a rundown of something. I was big. I was big on. I grew up on sound tapes. So okay. I grew. Up, I listened to all the sound tapes. I was like listening to stuff. I started from Foundation, so Saxon sound. Yeah. My favorite MCs were like Saxon Unity. Yeah. Demon Rockers, Flinty Badman, Navigator. Yeah. I used to yeah, love okay, the SoundClass yeah, yeah, stuff. So I, I fell in yeah. love with the with the UK sound. 
of dancehall. Yeah. So I love reggae. And then when I heard Smiley Culture, Cockney Translator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sally yeah, Cutney yeah. translator. Yeah, I mean, I heard yeah, police yeah, yeah. officer. Police officer, don't give me no producer. And like, it was, to me, it was so refreshing because I love reggae, but when I heard the English style of it, yeah, it was like, wow. It just like, and then you know who my favourite artist was? Favourite MC on right. sound? Papa Levi. Papa Levi, okay, yeah. Papa Levi was like, me, like to me, like it was my idol. You know, okay. I, I thought he was amazing. His execution, his bars. See, I can't the remember way... as much of it yet, but I remember yeah. names like Papa Sun and my guy. Mad. Yeah, Papa Sun. I used to, I, used to, I was mad, a mad. Like, no, you're not. You're not. You're not guy like, mad. Papa Sun, Lieutenant Stitchy, um, all of them from that era. General Trees. Yeah, all you know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, I, I was a big fan of Papa Sun as well. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I love that side of it. But when the, the English side of it is what made me want to be an artist. Yeah. Okay. So that is even a, in this might inspire yeah. you. You're yeah, yeah, asking yeah, for my yeah, early yeah, inspiration. Yeah, yeah. So obviously I love dancehall, mm. and Papa Sam was my favorite. Yeah, Jamaican dance wise in yeah. them years. Papa Sam mm. for lyrics. Then Ninja Man was one of my Ninja favorites. Man, well, but yeah. for lyrics and style, because Papa Sam would just have one bag of lyrics. Yeah. Oh my god! Like he would just man would go on stage and yeah, chat Ninja, like stories. Ninja Man was bad. Ninja Man was, was crazy. Bad. He was bad. He, he was, was bad. unbelievable. He was the most entertaining. He was just captivating. Like. The, all of these people I'm mentioning, like they actually inspired me. And a lot of people might say, "Who's that? Who's that? Who's that?" Like you look into these guys. These guys are absolute motherfucking legends. And yeah, like, come on, man. they inspired me to do what I do. Mm. To be honest with you, so it was like mm. I love Papa Sam was my favorite dance mm. artist from Jamaica, along with Ninja Man. Mm. You know what I mean? Because their yeah. lyrics and their stage, pro it was about stage show. Mm. More than even records at that time, it was how good you was on stage in the sounds, you know, in the dance. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know, know what I mean? Because your like, lyrics truth and, be told, and holding the mic, you know. Papa San's got a couple hits, but he was known for his stage show. Okay. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. I'd, I'd buy the tapes, listening to get the to tapes for the, yeah. the live. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Now. So then, obviously, I. I so that's when I started listening. To, this is like in the eighties. Because man's not doing the whole tune, is it? It's like no. a little eight bar. Yeah. Off the, you understand? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. And, that's and, and the DJ would play. The DJ would play the little juggling, and then flip the instrumental over, and then the artist would perform. That's how sound system work. Like they do yeah. the juggling, like play a one rhythm, like the sling thing rhythm, for instance. Yeah. And then they'll play like four, five, ten cuts on the sling thing. Yeah. And then yeah, after that, they, and, and then was... they'll flip the instrumental over, and then the artist around the sound would perform. Okay. And that's how I got to know it. And that's what was my influence from. And that was the same for me listening to Big Because I know every sound in Jamaica, Black Cat, Kilimanjaro, Metro Media, Stereograph. So you knew all of this from, yeah. from England. You've yes. already studied. The, yes, I grew studied. up on the foundation of it. Okay. Every bit like from the foundation. I, yeah. I, I, I might as well say I studied it from a very young age. Yeah. Because I fell in love with it. Yeah. From a yeah, young age. So yeah, I'm listening yeah. to all of it from so young. Yeah. So by um by the time I'm sixteen, I know all of the sounds, I know all of the MC the the, mm. the artists, the DJs, the MCs. Yeah, and then like from England to Jamaica, yeah. I was even the plug for sound tapes with my okay. friends at that okay, time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll be going out and I know where to go get the new sound tapes from I'd wanna get the new sound. That's what um I fell in love with. And then the here in Saxon. Mm. Unity, Flinty Badman, Smiley Culture, Papa Levi, them man there was like, oh right, they got an English twang to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that inspired, so that inspired me to be who I am today almost. Yeah. So uh, what other genres was you also listening to? You listening That's to why I give you an example. You see when you hear like Tug of War chat, like dance mm. and even from London Anthem. Yeah. Um yeah, see, right, go. When it rises, yeah, call blimey. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying to yeah, dance yeah. and I'm saying an English word. What call blimey is such an English word. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? It says, yeah, yeah. Stalky bad band, them gonna tiny, yeah, grimy. Yeah, yeah. When it rises, yeah, call blimey. blimey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always did that because I, that was my style. I always like to represent where I'm from and that's yeah, my yeah, style. So I never, yeah, rather so than keep it. Melting pot. It, exactly, because yeah. I'm a hybrid yeah. artist. Yeah, um, it's, it's a, everything. Yeah. yeah. It's not just like, you know. Exactly. And that's my influence from listening to like the likes of Saxons. Art is Saxon MC. When they had the English in it, like with Smiley Culture did li with the yeah, police officer, saying. yeah, Cockney translator. That's my, yeah, yeah. That's, my that's my how broke yeah. It down. So that was my inspiration to do that kind of stuff. Okay, okay. You was listening to rap as well. Yeah, I was always what a was you massive. Studying no, like, both of them at the same time. Same time. Simita yeah, simultaneously. So yeah. like I, my first, 
I bought my first rap album. Oh, that's that's one of my questions. Go, go ahead. What's your first? Well, obviously, I would have said CD. Yeah. But you could say album because that would have been record, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it record? Was yeah, it on it, vinyl? It was, it? it was vinyl. Yeah. What was your first? Um, I think it was Public Enemy. Public Enemy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My first record I okay. bought was Public Enemy. Their where did you Where did you get it from? Um. Our, not our price, uh, Woolworth, Stokey. Woolworth, okay, yeah. on the high street. Woolworth, Stokey on the high street. Remember, there's the records in there? Yeah. yeah. Remember? The that's where I bought my first. And okay, then um, yeah, they, mum used that, to go shopping in Holloway. Like, yeah. So in Holloway had our price. Our price. So I used, HM, yeah. Was it HMVs in it? No, yeah. I think. There was our price in Holloway. I think there was a HMV, I think there might have been, but I know there was an R price in Holloway. So we used to go I know our, there was a HMV, I from our price. Maybe in Dawson, but Woolworths so. had the music section. Yeah. In Stokey, they had the whole music. Yeah. So that's where I bought it from. And then, like, my first CD I bought was Doggy Style. Doggy Style? Snoop Dogg, Snoop 1993. Dogg. Shabby. Yeah, and Wu-Tang. That's, that's and, and so I think I bought them, like, simultaneously. Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers. Yeah. That's I think the they come out the same CD year. I, I, think I think Wu-Tang, Doggy Style was more or less around the same year. Mm. 36 Chambers and Doggy Style. It's my first album I bought. Yeah, that's cold. Yeah, on CD. And before that, on the vinyl, it was, like, Public Enemy. I bought Bobby Brown's album. <laughs> like, I was a big Michael Jackson fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But I'll, uh, even Cypress Hill. Yeah, jump House around. House of Pain House is of crazy. Pain. Jump the, um, around. Um, jump out, jump out. Get down. Connor from House of Pain followed me the other day. Okay. And then I was like, wow, yeah. Yeah, the guy, yeah. So I was like, big yeah, up Connor from House of Pain. Big up boy, <laughs> Connor, man. Enough, 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 it's my idol. I grew up listening to them jump around. Come on, man. You know what yeah, come on, man. That was one of the first albums I bought. Come on, man. Their album. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah. The first um, album I <coughs> on CD was Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style. That was my and first. my first yeah, tape yeah. that I bought was Domino. Yeah, I Domino. Here, here we go, go here we go. go. <laughs> hey, Domino, I bought for you. Tell me the album was dead apart from that song. <laughs> Blood up. That's no, what, I didn't there, was a, there, there was a next one tune. There was a next yeah. one tune, I think. Something, yeah. something, like a, something pie or something. Yeah. But, that tune was the tune. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah, how yeah, they yeah, sold yeah. it to us because I they don't, sold. That's how I they marketed know, shit like that. I don't that, know how they, they got mm. everyone because I've heard other men say, "Yeah, I bought that as well." And mm. it's like, was he was he big them times? Was he like, I don't know. He must have been popping them times. He Domino. must have been. He must have been popping them times. That song hit. That song in it. Must have that been in it. Them days, yeah. <laughs> them days. <laughs> if you had a big enough single, you get an album though. <laughs> yeah. Because the single was big enough. Because he had. I remember. The, remember the video. Yeah, yeah, um, the, yeah the, I remember watching the video. Yeah, yeah, the video on, on MTV on, and all of that. On yeah. TV and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. On, yeah it, I think that was like playlist, playlist, because it had the little situation with it. You get me? So like that single made you buy the album. So I bought the album because of the single, and mm. I remember listening to the album. I was young as well. Mm. I remember listening to the album thinking, oh, there's nothing on there apart from here we go, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's only so many times you can play this song. <laughs> like it's I just like I just you. always remember it. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, cause, ah, uh, who said this? Yeah. First thing in the morning, roaches and bugs cover the wall. Best keep your ears plugged. <laughs> you gotta sleep with one eye open at all times. You can't trust these criminals at, at no, no time. time. <laughs> <laughs> who said that, bar? <laughs> Your guy called a guy called Neil Fetus and Neil Feety. <laughs> <laughs> AKA AKA Tug of War <laughs> Tug of War That bar sounds familiar just, yeah. Hard bar I like that one yeah. Repeat that one again <laughs> This is history You know These bars They send shivers down my smack Because it's real shit <laughs> Repeat that one again First thing in the morning Roaches, roaches and, and bugs, bugs Cover the wall Better keep ears plugged <laughs> Gotta sleep with one eye put- one eye open at all times. Can't trust these criminals at no, no time. time. Yeah, that's so. That is criminal. That, isn't that it? is just weird. okay. That's criminal. The song which, criminal. Which yeah. kind of leads us into the next section of what we're doing. Yeah. Um. That. What got you into making music? Uh huh. Yeah. What got? We've already touched on that. I'm going mm. mad. No, you're good. You're good. Jamaica. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like okay, you've like you studied the whole thing. You know it now. Yeah. You've decided to go to Jamaica. Yeah, I, I didn't just decide to go. I was, I was um, my first girlfriend. Okay. Was Jamaican, so she wanted to take me there to in, to take me to. She lived from Spanish Town. Okay. So my, I ended up getting locked up in Spanish Town. Okay. But my first girlfriend was from Spanish Town. I went in, I went in the jail with my. I had a fifteen hundred pound Rolex on. 
Yeah. And I said, and, and they found, and the police officer found a bag of weed in my, from England, would you believe it? That was in my mm. case. Okay. That ended up in the clothes. That was from England at 8th, mm. you know? Yeah, okay. At 8th grade. Yeah. From England. Found that as well. They yeah. found it in the police station, not the yeah. airport, the police station when they were searching my clothes in the police station. Now they found it. And I was like, oh, I don't know what that is. I didn't know about that. And I was even saying to the <laughs> police officer, me, I was like, blood, allow me, me, bro. Man, you just nipped me for six pounds a week. Don't bring out that little bag that I start talking shit to me now, bro. Yeah. Put me in the fucking yeah. cell and let me fucking go. You're like, I was upset about that. So they see me dealing. You know what? I, I always, I, I don't know if you heard this part. So that same little bag of weed. I've gone, even the police officers see, I'm vexed off us. Mm. <laughs> I'm off, bad in I'm like, yeah. bro, I'm like, I'm vexed. Mm. So mad. They put me in the cell, I go and sit in the corner. I sit down, I'm like, no one don't talk to me, bro. <laughs> the policeman, mm. who took the weed, five minutes after him letting me in the section, because it's like a, like, like, like them bars at the front, so it's just bars at the front. They lock you yeah, in, yeah, 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 and it's yeah, just yeah. a big thing. Everyone's on the floor. Bro. Yeah, yeah. At the, see, when you go into the, um, see, like in, like when I went to Jamaica, my cousin yeah. got into trouble in it. Okay. And we had to go and visit him. But yeah, yeah. I, I think he was going to that prison or something. Was but, it? Was it but, Kingston? But, no, we was in a uh, Maypen, Camden. Yeah, I know Maypen. But, but yeah. when we got there, yeah. it's like, like we got there, and it's. It was like, no, it was the building. It's not even the building. It's like a shack yeah. or something. It's and nice. it's like, yeah, we looked in and I could see my cousin. <laughs> no, like, I'm not like, but I could see my cousin there, like, in the gates. <laughs> you know, like, That's it. You know, like, That's on the bars, the, the bare yeah. bars. Yeah, yeah you're there my, on the bars. My cousin's there. We could just chat to him. Yeah. <laughs> we could just chat to him. No, that's the closest you're getting. <laughs> we could chat to him from, yeah. the, from the thing. Like. That's the closest you're getting. <laughs> That's the closest you're getting. I'm like, and oh, you can't shit. see sunlight. Like, I get to the bars and I look over there and I can see where the sun's shining. Through the door. And yeah, the door I can see it shining on the reception area where yeah, the police yeah, are, yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah, ain't yeah, shining yeah, on but me. But it doesn't come... Yeah, sun ain't yeah, shining yeah, on me. Yeah. You just see it in the distance. <laughs> yeah. It's fuckery. So you see the same bag of weed, bro? Yeah. After I went and sat down, police officer comes up to the, 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 the rails, the grill. Yeah. And says, English man, come here. And I'm gonna, and I was like, what? So I've, I was in the corner, right in the corner. I got up and went up to him. I said, like, what? I said, like, man, gave me the bag of weed. Okay, he's new, you stress, man. He's like, yeah. Man, man gave me back the bag be, of weed. In the whole of the it's like he that. said, you know, that guy needs this. Yeah, he needs this, man. He needs this, that, man. I was so shocked. This police officer was so cool. I was so surprised. Imagine, like, you're just getting nicked, you're getting dealt with. A couple of them dealt with me harshly. Mm. A couple of them threatened to gun butt me. I had a little bad mm. experience with them as well. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? I was handcuffed at the back of a fucking chair and they were trying to bab me up at one point. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. <clears throat> but this one, he he was cool. He was really mm. cool. He brought mm. the weed mm. to me. To the, he didn't have to do yeah. that. No, of course. He didn't have to do that. He could, he come up to the fucking chair and he said, yo, Englishman, come here. And I went up there and he gave me the fucking bag of weed. Mm. And then when I got there, I sat back down. I realised, I worked out quickly, Hackney Instincts, who's running this section? Mm. Rock him off a little spliff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's, it. it's got to work. It's one, got to work. Got, like... there's, there's two ways it can work in it. You can, like, because someone's going to see that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're going to need to smoke that. It, it's mad. And it's so your got, introduction yeah, to the. So you've got to work out, yeah. okay, how's man going to. Yeah, manoeuvre. Navigate, navigate through this, through this, this. Local situation. So I worked oh, out, like, so that was an older guy. Yeah. Up. Yeah. My bridge. My bridge, yeah, yeah, all this, yeah. yeah. You get it? Yeah. And start working out who's who. Mm. And then just took it from there. <laughs> and it's day from there and it's day and, and day by day. And it was like it was mm. it was it was mad in there because straight away when I went I said it was a red cross on the wall. Yeah. I never forget it was the first it was like half an hour in there and I said to the guy who looked like he was right, he was, he was running the that section, it was an older yeah. Jamaican guy called Mikey, the same guy who asked yeah. about the tissue in his. Yeah. He's one of them Swifties. Yeah. Dead cool guy. Yeah. And he looked like a general for them in there still. Yeah. <clears throat> you could see he was he, he had yeah. the talk. You get yeah. me? Anyway, so I, it was a cross on the wall, red cross. And I said to him, Yo, what's what's that cross for? And he said, Yeah, they killed someone last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh I'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so it like a little grave for the man there for the wall, a little yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, like they yeah. said, yeah, they bust his choice. So, yeah, man, bust them, bust. I brought that truck there last week. Yeah. It's me, oh. 
See? Was you right at any bars when you was there? Was you even in the jail? Yeah. Was you? No, in the about, jail, you're thinking about survival. You just think you can't even think about. No, no there's no music. Nothing. Yeah, it's not even that nothing. time. Like, do you know what the maddest thing is? You know, you get phone call over here. Yeah. <laughs> got a phone call, man. Yo, I asked him about phone call. The man didn't laugh. I walked away. Like. I said, Yo, gotta get a phone call. He's like, Pfft. Yeah, good, alright, man. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, how the fuck do we get a phone call out here? So I'm gonna. <laughs> like, I was like, what do you mean, no phone call? You just keep me here. Like, I can't talk to no one. Like, not even for a minute. So I'm like, I'm going on about it. I'm like, I want a phone call on the phone. He said, no, nah, you don't get no phone call. I'm like, what kind of that dog? That's, that's like no one. No, no one, one gets treated one, like that. No one's got bed. No one's got. <laughs> same guy, same yeah. police officer that gave me the weed. He said, yo, you know me? I said, I had to come on and we got to pop my phone for your use. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. I said, get me a... I said, I'll see what's going on here. Yeah. I said, get me a chicken and rice while you're out there and a bag of weed and cigarettes. Yeah. You actually... Yeah. yeah! Yeah, yeah, Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to build up your... It's cool. I can ask him for weed. He brought me the weed a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. I said, look, some man come back. I bought him a phone card and I gave him a money for himself. Yeah. So I bought him... Phone card for the phone. Yeah. Chicken and rice in a box. <laughs> Small box food, chicken and rice, fried chicken and rice. And bag of weed, box of craving, eh? and Rizla. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For 2,000 <laughs> Jamaican dollars. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he kept half the money. It's just, just the tax. Yeah. yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying, isn't yeah. it? Like, and he's already preed it. Like, he can do business. You know them ones? Yeah. Like, he's seen what man's in there for. Yeah. You know them ones? You're not like these other ones that's just going to chat shit or... You yeah. know them ones? So he'll give us the phone and he'll, he'll, give it to, he'll give it to me the time where it's cool to use it because he'll keep... Because there's only certain time you can use it because there'll yeah. certain guards you can't... Can't really run. So you sort of yeah, all right, so we'll give it to us and then we'll get a, like a little half hour to use the phone. Mm. You get me? And I let I, I let other people in the cell who needed to make phone calls as yeah. well. And I never forget these two mad phone calls was the first one where I actually phoned my dad and told him I got Nick. Because mm. he knows I'm he, the Papa one knows what I was doing, isn't it? Yeah. But he was like, so he knows he, he so he's thinking I'm on the flight now. I'm in yeah. fucking jail, isn't it? Yeah. So I got I managed to make that call and tell Dad. Yeah. Um, like they caught me. I'm yeah. in jail. Yeah. And then the outcome of the court case two weeks later, mm -hmm. when I get sent to court to tell him the outcome yeah. what my sentence is. Yeah. And <coughs> by then two weeks I'm seasoned into the jail system, got sentenced. We get the phone mm. that day, and I remember someone else was in court with me. Like a few of us come back from the court. And this guy, I can't remember if he made the call before me or after me. I can't remember if I made my call first or he made his full call first. I can't remember. But he phoned his family to tell his family he's doing... And he had, like, four kids. And I hear him on the phone to his children, telling him he's got 25 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's finished. And you know what? The man's putting a brave face to it. And he, he, I was like, I was watching it. I was watching him. I was like, damn, that's a fucking call to make. Mm -hmm. That's a fucking cool. And the guy seemed proper cool, like, and he was like, and "That's was, the only was, time you're gonna get to he use was, the yeah, phone." Yeah, he was. It? He was very. He was very. He was very like still joyful, about not joyful, but like he was still in, trying to keep his spirit high. Yeah, it's he, he just come back from the court. There's two ways. I'm vexed. I got sentenced yeah. a year. Yeah, it's two ways though. Yeah, it's either what he did. Yeah, or. Just like mm. it's some double murder charge. It's just like what's that. It called, I don't know it? the ins and outs of it. You just, mm. you know what I'm saying, innit? It's either you, you keep yourself calm, happy, smiling, and just like you think, wow, what's happening? Well, what, 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 what that is, is madness. Exactly. The other way is madness. Isn't madness. It? It's just madness. There's no like, and, and yeah, absolutely. Let go of the will. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, exactly, and that made me um, think because I was really upset. Uh, like, I'm kind of, I'm vexed, isn't it? Like yeah. what I said, I went in there upset, but obviously, yeah. my whole world's got turned upside down. I'm yeah. in jail, everything's going foreign crazy. Country, everything, foreign country, foreign yeah. country. Like, I didn't really plan for this. Da, 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 da. And then when I saw that, I was like, nah, like Tuggy, like that's something to be upset about. That's crazy. Yeah. So like, I started looking at my sentence, like it's nothing. Yeah. Which yeah. I had to do six months out of a year. I only done six months. I paid. It was only eight yeah. months, but I yeah. paid a fine, so it was fine and confined. Yeah. So fifteen hundred pound fine. 
to get two months locked off the sentence. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> like, you course, know what I mean? Course, 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 so you course, turn course. an eight-month sentence into... Because you do three quarters. Over here, you do half. Mm -hmm. in, in, in England, you do half your sentence, innit? Yeah. In Jamaica, you do three quarters. So yeah. if you get a year, you do eight months. Okay. You pay the fine. You get half of that locked off. Half of the four months, which is two months locked off. Yeah, yeah. Which is half of the eight months is four months. You can get half of that locked off, which is two months, and turn yeah, the eight into six. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So I got in so a year, six months. So I've really got a six month sentence. Yeah. And I'm stressing, and this guy just got twenty five years. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's so still I, there's still severity, yeah. but it's not matching to his what mm -mm. he's just facing, isn't it? No, no, no. So it made me look at shit different at that time as well. I think it was like the the time because he was like, I I just made a phone call to my dad. Yeah. He's made his phone call. I phoned my dad to tell him my outcome of my yeah. case. You know, and he's phoned his phone call to make his till his outcome to his family and kids. Yeah. And the guy's lovely. You know, the whole night we spent up arguing about Bounty Killer and Beanie Man. Yeah. Like, we, we kept it uplifting the spirits in the jail. Yeah. Like, it was... Like what you said, if you don't, you go crazy. So... <coughs> you see what... Yeah. You went back... Or, no, this is something I've never actually fully known. Yeah, tell so, me. So, like... Because you went back as an artist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was that when, like, see, when you was in jail? Yeah. Is that when you built up your links? For when you, or did you go, you know what I mean? Did you start doing artist stuff when you left jail? Or, do you understand what I'm saying? Did you come back to England? Not straight away, no. Not I, straight away? No, no, no. I stayed in Jamaica. So I always you stayed, stayed in Jamaica? I illegally stayed in Jamaica. Okay. Like, I, I actually... Paid off immigration and stayed in Jamaica. I was meant to be deported because I'm a British citizen. Yeah. But we we t I got a link to stay in the country. Yeah. And my ex was going through. It was a death in her family, and she had to stay mm. and sort out things. And she done the last two months mm. of my sentence because they found her guilty of knowledge. Yeah. So and I wanted to stay in the country because I matched up the stage show. I met Sean Paul's father in prison. Yeah, so you, I met, you, I met, you um, was, when you went, before you <coughs> show, you was obviously doing music here. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Was your, like, the, the level of what you was doing, was it to be guiding on doing all of these stage shows in, do you know what I'm saying? Like, what was you say, doing say in England? Say that again, England? what do you mean the level? Say again. You see, like, you was performing, innit? Yeah. yeah but how I see it, yeah? How old was you when you went to jail? About 21. 21. Yeah. So what was you doing in England, like, musically? MCing. So I was, MCing. I, I was MCing on Freak FM. I was on way too, I was way too nang. Way too nang. Yeah. We had remember. a record. I, that's, I was... that's who you forgot to mention when we was talking about the um, Ricky Blue. And that, yes, of course I did. The other stars. Because he was, yes. Yeah, way yes. too nang. Yes, Philly, yes. Philly, and Philly Urgent, and, Dark. And all of them. And they, Crocs, yeah, yeah. Easy Rider. Yes. Yeah, so I was in way too nang. I was, and, then I, and then I went solo. But I was a solo. I didn't really start recording. The first song I ever recorded was, are you ready for the way too nang? With way too nang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then... I started recording a couple solo songs for a production company in in Hornsey Road called Rough and Tumble. Yeah. But the songs never got released. Okay. And that's where I met Coco. Because okay. Coco was but signed these, to Rough and these Tumble. Tunes, um, were these tunes like um dancehall tunes or were they like more They were garage They or were uh, no the the It was the ones the stuff with Rough and Tumble was yeah. dancehall influence, hip hop, okay. hip hoppy, yeah. dancehall y. Yeah. They had their own sound, yeah. fair dues to them. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. They had a kind of unique sound around there. I liked it. It was yeah. kind of suited me. It was like dance or it weren't garagey or that. Because I, I didn't, I liked to rave to house and garage and stuff yeah. like that. But I hated it to spit to. Okay. I hated when garage became, took over from jungle. Because yeah. I like spitting to jungle. Yeah. But I didn't like spitting to house and garage. So the Freak FM era and all of that, I didn't enjoy it musically because it wasn't me. Yeah. But I felt like I was forced to, be around it because that was what was popping at the time. That's what everyone was Everyone doing. stopped going to the jungle raves. Jungle faded out. Everyone starts going garage and garage, house and yeah. shit. And they're spitting to it and he's like, and I'm seeing, and, and no the disrespect. Beats are more mellow. Yeah, no disrespect to them. It don't suit me. I, 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 I like, like fair juice to all of the legends like uh, Creed and these yeah, guys. And, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, which turned into grime and mm. a great, great legends in there. And it's a great genre, but it wasn't tug of war. Yeah. Tug was high energy. It don't work on that. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So it just wasn't for me. And I, yeah. I, I hated it musically. I felt lost. It was, the, it was the most depressing time of my whole career. Yeah. That. Doing house and garage and that. Yeah. That's, it, it was my most depressing time because I felt like a dancehall hip-hop artist lost in this fucking genre. That's nothing to do with 
Yeah. And it's what was going on, it's what I was around. Yes. I enjoyed it at the time. It. Everyone else was doing it. Yeah. I didn't like it. That's why when it comes to Freak FM and the way to Nang, I made the um the bashment show. Okay. That was my idea. Okay, so you, you get what I'm saying? I, yeah, play. I'm my idea. I bought the yeah. bashment records. Yeah. I, I couldn't play them, so I made Dark turn into the selector dark from yeah. MC Dark. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I showed him how to play the bashment initially. Yeah. yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Because so that was you, my. Did you start making bashment music yourself then? When did you me produce it? Yeah, when did you... I never made beats. No, I'm talking about you spit. You know, like yeah. Remember, you're doing the way too nang stuff in it. So yeah. that's more. Um... I was always spitting dancehall. You was always from spitting. day one. Yeah. From okay. from from um, you can listen. You can have a listen on the radio. It's on yeah. YouTube from '96. From I used to MC on Kick FM, Rush FM. Yeah. yeah. My style was always. I remember it was doing more it. like. In the jungle days, and yeah, it, it was, it was more always like dancehall. Yeah, I've like, always had this dancehall ragga style saying. to it. Yeah, I remember doing a tape for Cool FM. Listen to this now. Nine four five. Nine four five, and I was on Kick FM, which was Rush, mm. which was big Rush FM that turned into Kick FM. Rush kind of finished for a minute, and it turned into Kick FM nine two three. So I was on Kick FM, mm. and then nineteen ninety six, I'm on Kick FM. Yeah, and um, I remember wanting to get on Cool. Mm -hmm. And I went down Bandit Yard, DJ Bandit Yard in Stokey, and I did a whole tape. And I gave it to Cool, and they said, I'm too ragger for them. Okay. <laughs> in 96, yeah, 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 I got yeah. turned down. Yeah, for being... For being too... But they had, ragger. what's it called? They because had, they, they had, exactly. they had, okay, they trying to say that, they didn't they, want you to challenge, ah. they didn't want you to be challenging, because they had the ragger twins, that's yeah. already a yeah. thing. They had um, Navigator. Stevie, Navigator, they had um, Stevie, um, Hyper D. There was, a, there was one or two more as well. That Brocky, yeah. um, Skibber D, like, yeah. and they were the trying, but there was ones that had that, like, but they were trying to, they were trying to get rid of that whole sound. If you know, it's like jungle. What happened with jungle? They got, they took the dance or reggae out of jungle, yeah. and it turned into drum and bass. Okay, yeah. I get so what you're around the year '96 is around the time where jungle was turning into drum and bass full on, mm. and it was the Skibber D style, the, yeah. the, 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 the Shabba style. Yeah. This style was what they wanted. At the time, yeah, more well, it's what they pushed. Yeah. They pushed the dance or reggae style out because early jungle music was heavy, it was all sampled heavy, and stuff sampled and reggae yeah. samples, yeah, yeah, yeah. dance or record yeah, yeah. samples, heavy bass yeah, lines, wicked, vocal. Wicked. But oh, even yeah. before that, like yeah, like before, Budra yeah. Bant and Records remix, yeah. Caper and Records remix, yeah. they turned that into drum and bass. Yeah, as I love jungle, so when drum and bass got too noisy and it yeah. got too spitty like that, yeah. like a respect to what they do, but that wasn't me either. Yeah. So that's when I was kind of... I, there was a period where I was lost. Yeah. Because dancehall weren't popping over here. Everyone was doing house and garage. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this dancehall hip-hop artist lost. Because yeah. it was like, how the fuck do you bust in... As a, yeah. as a half Greek, half Irish... Yeah. Dancehall sounding yeah, yeah, artist yeah, yeah, from Hackney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How the fuck do you get in the business? The even it, at that awesome. time, it was like impossible. Yeah. I felt lost, but that's me. That was my style. And yeah. I stayed true to it. So when I went through the experience in Jamaica mm. and got locked up mm. in the prison and then met Sean Paul's dad yeah. and then saw an angle to make a career. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is like a dream come true because I was thinking... Oh, it's like, You've already got lyrics. No, it's like oh, something I always want to do yeah, yeah. and didn't have an angle to do it. Yeah, in England. In then, England. But now you're in the place Now where, I'm in the place. Now I'm out here doing crime the, and got yeah. caught up in a whole different thing. Yeah. And then ended up in a situation where I got an angle yeah. to do so this. So with Sean Paul's dad, how did that, like... Not like how did it come back, mm. come about, but like... You know what I'm saying? Like, how did he let you know that there was an opportunity for you to be on stage? To go and do a stage show, for instance. We're in the prison. So he's in the prison with you. No, no. Oh, he didn't give. He didn't tell me about no opportunity. Yeah. He was locked up on the same section as me. Okay. He's five cells away from me. Okay. I'm on this side. He's on that side. Okay. So he's literally five cells away from me. He got locked mm. up after I got locked up. So I watched him yeah. when he walked in the prison to his, and done his with his first yeah. day. Yeah. And everyone pointed out, "Oh, Sean Paul's dad." Okay. At the time. That's how I got new. It's Sean Paul's dad. Yeah. I looked at him and said, oh, yeah, he looks like Sean Paul. Yeah. Truth be told, at the time, Sean wasn't the big platinum megastar who he is now. Yeah. Give Me The Light wasn't out yet. Yeah. His biggest tune was Woman I Wanna Be, which is yeah. still a like, big a, song. Yeah, yeah. But he had big songs in Jamaica. He, would, he didn't bust internationally yet. Yeah. This is 2002. Give Me The Light didn't bust yet. He ain't done no video for it. It ain't out like that yet. It ain't, yeah. People don't know Sean like that yet. He was he was in the process of doing his first album. So it was like, and to be honest with you, I'm in prison. You could have been Michael Jackson's dad. 
Yeah. I always want to get out of it. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Do you get what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. Who's dad's in here? Mm. Like, because it's our songs that's all right. Lovely. Mm. It's another day in hell. It's hell in there. You don't yeah. give a fuck who the fuck you locked up with. Yeah. Anyway, Easter Monday, Alizade was in there. So we got Alizade, Michael Sterling. He was locked yeah. up in there. Zebra. You know Zebra, right? Yeah. Zebra was like, he's okay. on the second floor. Okay. I'm on the ground floor. Let me show you how the, the section set up. Okay. Ground so floor. You, there's people me. you even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like even the ground floor. You know Penny Harry? Girl, you have your dinner, yo, they have my dinner, I'll take it out. Oh, okay, okay. I speak, you know he's talking song, like yeah. a man from England or no, something. Penny Ivory, yeah, dance wise. He's, yeah, yeah. he's next door to me. Okay, yeah. So I'm in this cell. Penny Ivory's next door to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alizade's five cells away from me. Yeah. Uh, Zebra's on the second floor. Yeah. Jack Ewell's across there. There's bare dance man in the it's prison. Bad. Okay. There's a music section on the prison. Okay. So I I was hanging at like big up Jack Ewell because I, I, because like in the prison's crazy. So you gotta make a choice. You see that little time you get out of your cell? Yeah. Careful. Yeah. Because you go around the wrong crew, you're fucked. And there's people in there ready to draw you out. There's one bag of man in there ready to draw you out. There's one bag of like it's dangerous. Like you get around the wrong set of people, end up in an argument, you can get shanked quick, yeah. or you get hurt or whatever. Everyone's walking around with a ratchet. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You bear troublemakers in there. Yeah. So you gotta know how to navigate through the madness. Mm -hmm. So me as a spitter, I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm a music man, so you, you got all the artists kind of hang around together, so we'll be spitting lyrics. Yeah. So that's, I was doing that before the stage show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got to know me as the spitter, as a, as yeah, a, yeah, before yeah, yeah. even the stage show, hence yeah. the reason why Jackie all called me up. Okay. Because I'm spitting with him every day. Yeah, in jail, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, he ain't going to call up a, a random white man in the crowd, he don't know yeah. if he can spit or not, yeah. in the middle of his set. Yeah. Remember, Jack, you called me up in the middle of his yeah, set, yeah, yeah. of his so performance. That's, that's your first, that was like your first break yeah, so in that. Like, yeah, in the prison. In the prison. Because yeah. I helped set up the 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 set, the, um, the speakers and everything, because that morning was Easter Monday, yeah. and they let us out all day. So usually you only get like two, three hours out a day. So yeah. it was like let out from nine in the morning till seven at night. We had the whole day out that mm. day. Yeah. So we woke up, we went and took the sound system, carried the whole sound system over to my section. So the whole dance, mm. I go on in my section mm. in the prison. Okay. So I was thinking this was on the road. No, so it's in, in, the, the prison, in, in the prison. In the prison yard, yeah, bro. Yeah, okay. So this is... We're okay. carrying speakers in the prison yard, bro. Yeah. In the middle of the field in the prison yard where they play football, bro. Yeah. And there's a stage like, where we would do... Like, you know, there's a stage where they do... They got little so rocks. So you did bear stage shows then, didn't it? Like you did. Like, <coughs> My first stage show was in the prison. In the prison, okay. This stage show. So in I don't the think prison. I've heard any of this part of the story. Oh, bro. sorry. That, That's what I'm saying. I've That's been, why it's, it's just been like, told, but maybe you didn't catch it. Like so yeah, my first time I ever performed in Jamaica yeah, was in, in the prison. prison. Okay. It was Easter Monday, and they have stage shows in the prison. They got all the sound system, live bands, big speakers like carnival. Yeah. That's why I said I was help. I help. They got a music section in the prison that you can yeah. sign up to. So. I wasn't valid to get on the music section because I was a short sentencer. Yeah. You got to be doing over a certain. You got to be doing like ten years or fifteen years yeah. plus to get yeah, on the yeah, music yeah. section. So Jack Yo was on the music section, obviously, and you got some other people like so the music section. They got over there everything, microphones, guitars, bands. So they rehearse. Yeah. Live bands rehearsal, full on music section. Yeah. Crazy. So I helped them carry the equipment over to our section mm -hmm. on the day of the dance. Yeah. So I'm helping them set up everything. Yeah. And then we done an early segment on records because the bands, the main dance had live bands. My brethren yeah. from, Me we got, um, Jano Star, I forget his name, my brethren from Melomix was playing the bass for the bands. Mm -hmm. Dan Man left his guitar there as well. Like one of them was playing Dan Man's guitar for the, for, on the stage show. So he had mm -hmm. full on bands, bassy, lead guitar player, drummer, Who's never rehearsed with Zebra and Jacure in the prison? Because they do a music section every day. Yeah. They're allowed to, if you're signed up to the music section, you can go every day for like half an hour, hour. Mm. You get me? So we was all jealous that these guys get to go and do music every day. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so they, um, Jacure called you up on the stage and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, Jacure, Jacure, so we, we done an early part of the dance mm -hmm. where we were performing on records and that. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mash up that segment. It was like all the prison yeah. artists. I'm yeah. one of the prison artists, like yeah. the no-name artists, no-name no prison artists that were yeah. up yeah. in that category at the time. Yeah. It was a bunch of us. Yeah. 
Yeah. We was performing on that before yeah. the main show starts. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying, yeah. Do you understand where I'm coming yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, so when the main show starts, we'll, I'm, on, I'm on the stage. I'm part of the whole setup kind of thing. So I'm yeah. on the stage yeah. while the main show's going on. I ain't in the crowd. Yeah. There's 1,800 people in the prison. Yeah. There's 1,800 people at the, at the, at the yeah, show. Everyone's come to watch. Everyone's, it? everyone's come to watch. Yeah, of course they want to come at this. Song, come on. <laughs> everyone's in the crowd's thick. 2,000 people. Doing, I'm on the yeah. stage yeah. while Zebra and Jackie are performing. Okay. They've already rehearsed. They've got their thing rehearsed on the bands. They're performing with the bands. They had songs yeah. together even. Yeah. They were performing. It was mad. Bob Marley rhythms running. There was Creeper. Do, 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 do. Okay. I'm on the side. Jack, you was on the mic. They finished like a couple good segments together. They was on the stage for like 20 minutes, half an hour already mm. doing their thing. And then they still got the place jumping. And mm. In the middle of their set. And he looks at me and says, yo, come here. And he calls me on the stage and he gives me the mic. Mm. And I perform over that beat, that Bob Marley beat. Okay, so you... Yeah, and it was a lyric that I wrote in the prison. Yeah. And the whole prison was mad. The whole crowd yeah. was crazy. Okay. You okay. get what I'm saying? Yeah, and then yeah, um, yeah. Sean Paul's father, he wasn't... At, he was one of the few guys who wasn't at the show. Yeah. He was on the other side of the prison washing his plates. Yeah. Because that's what you usually do when you get your little time out. You yeah. You wash your clothes, the, 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 your plates. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So he was washing his plates. And they, when I'm on the mic, mashing up the show, mm -hmm. prisoners are running around the prison saying, yo, the white man are mashing up the place. The white man are mashing up the place. Yeah. Sean Paul's dad hears it, yeah? And then says, which, which white man? So he has to run. I'm not the only white man in the prison. Yeah. So what? he, he, um, sorry, he, uh, he rushes to the stage to see which white man it is. And he sees me. Mm -hmm. After the show, I'm in my cell. Same, same day. Yeah, After the show, I'm in my yeah. cell. And they've actually locked, everyone, people get locked in, locked down before others sometimes. So I'm actually locked down already. Our cell's locked. Mm -hmm. And he's going to his cell. And he passes my cell and he, and he comes up to my cell. He says, yo, my, you're bad. Yeah. You remind me of my, of my son, he says. Yeah. And from that day, the next day I started talking to him. He tells mm -hmm. me about his situation. That's how we started talking. Yeah. We became friends from him seeing me mash up the show. Yeah. And, and, he, and he rated me. And, he, yeah. and then we started, became friends. And mm -hmm. next day, and he, he, want, he wanted to arrange to keep me in the country to do music. Okay. Yeah. So it's because of Garth Enriquez, RIP Garth Enriquez. Sean Paul's dad is the one who mm -hmm. wanted to keep me in the country okay. to do music. So and he's he, the one that reached out. He got released two weeks before me. Okay. Yeah. So when you've come out now, he's holding He arranged it. Yeah. So he yes. said to me, I'm going to get out and I'm going to arrange with immigration to make sure that you can stay over here and do your music and everything. Okay. And like, even my prison cellmates were like, that's prison talk. Yeah. Swear talk. fam. Yeah. Even like, a few guys in my cell was like, yo, that's prison talk. He's, he's, talk, he's chatting he's shit. Talking shit. He ain't like... going to phone you. He's got the number of, of one raster man in the cell has got, got the mobile. Yeah? Mm -hmm. He's got the number. About a week after he gets released, phone rings. So, your tug is for you. So, mm. was that? Yeah. They were looking like, right, he actually called. Like, called the cellmates yeah. are looking at me like, shocked. The cellmates like, they have to eat their words now. Because they said, ah, oh, it's prison talk. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. He ain't thinking yeah. about you when he goes on road. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. Then when he calls, I'm looking at them like, eh. <laughs> he put Sean on the phone to me. Yeah. And Jason, his brother. Yeah. Sean's brother, his other son. Okay. And they're like, yeah, and they're like, they're like, yeah, well, yeah, we look forward to seeing you when you come out. And Red was like, he had me gas, and he's like, yeah, I'm arranging with the immigration. Roy Francis said he can make, he can tell the immigration that like, you can stay over him, so we'll pay them a little bit, da, 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 and we can yeah. arrange it for you to stay over. Here. Yeah. Did you do any songs with him? Any music with, with him? With who? Sean. Yeah. Not, not with Sean, but with like the dad underneath any sort of former label or anything. Or well, it weren't. It, it, he he took me to my first. He introduced me to the studio. Yeah. So, we got Roy Francis. I spoke to him the other day. It's happy. Yeah. He owns a studio called Mixing Lab Studio in Kingston, which is one of the main studios in Kingston, right? Sean Paul's dad, Garth, is very close. He was very close with Roy. Yeah. Good friends with Roy. So, he's already spoke to Roy from when I'm in there, arranging to get me out. And mm. when I get out, I can go around to the Mixing Lab. And Roy, mm. Roy, Roy's got rhythms from Sly and Robbie. Mm. This yeah, one, that yeah. one. Do you get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so he's got all of these people, uh, people yeah. producing for him. So 
Garth took me to the studio and he weren't under his label or nothing. He took me to the studio and said, Roy, like, yeah. here's my boy, here's my guy. Okay. Like, no con run with him. No, no, he just did like, just do He your was managing, you might as well say, he was managing me, you know, in the yeah. early part. Yeah. Before I met Lexus. Yeah. And he was running around. He was like doing everything a manager would do. Yeah. So you might as well say he was managing. There was nothing in contract. No. Okay. We, we just had a really good friendship which we formed from prison. Yeah. And, and when we got out of prison, because we was parring together, you know, because we've both gone through the same shit, it, we, we, really, we, we could relate to each other because we just went through hell. Spanish Town Prison is hell. You wouldn't mm. wish it on your worst enemy. All the prisons in Jamaica is hell. Mm. So you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. Yeah. So, and it's hard to describe to people, you know, like I tell you about the conditions yeah. and the circumstances and everything. Yeah. Um, but it's hard to describe to people... Because like, it, 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 it's, it, it's like, yeah, like I, you tried to, you might visualize it, you might see clips here and there, but the experience is crazy. So you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. Yeah. So you said Sean Paul's dad, he, he was like pretty much like um, it, yeah. managing you from the early stages. Yeah. Because there was a time when I saw you, I saw Vibes Cartel shout you out once or bring you on some sort yes, of show. Yes. Yes. W was Sean Paul's dad no, anything that, in... No, no, no. I, by then, I established myself. I learned the roles. Because remember, I come out of prison, I didn't know Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I spent two weeks there. Yeah. Yeah, and then another... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and then and I, and I spent, then months, I spent yeah, everything yeah. else in prison. Yeah. So I don't know the roads. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. um, the prison... The, my experience in the prison... It numbed me of fear. Yeah. Your back's against the wall in these places. Yeah. So my back was against the wall so much that I come out of prison. Mm. I don't care. Mm. Yeah. yeah Jamaican. And, I, and, that, and that's you been might as well in, just be Jamaican now because you've been in the worst part of Jamaica. Exactly. Like you've been you can't show the, me anything. You've been amongst the, like, yeah. the, the, the most fair I've been criminals. Best, yeah. I, so. Yeah. I've been. The road people are going to be. I've been with the hyenas. Yeah, so the road people are not going to be as bad as these people. No, 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 no. I ain't, they're not, like, it's not to be... Stuff that I was scared of in Jamaica before I went to prison. Yeah. Because they say, like, oh, Kingston, careful in Kingston. Certain yeah. places in Kingston is dangerous. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Certain places Kingston is dangerous. Certain places Spanish Town is dangerous. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, all of these places, you, you hear about them, it's all oh, careful. Du, 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 du. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Bang. But when after what I experienced, like, like what I said, I've just been with the hyenas. I've just been with the, I've been yeah, with the yeah. worst of the worst. Yeah, it, yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. That's hell. Yeah. It don't get worse than that. Yeah. So when I'm out on road now, my, my sense of fear is gone. Yeah. That kind of stayed yeah, with yeah. me up to today. It changes yeah, you for yeah, life because yeah. like, you've seen that. So like, what are you going to show me? Yeah. You go to I was like, some places I wouldn't go to certain, certain places in the ghetto that I might have been a bit more uh, mm. uh, cautious to go. I didn't care. Yeah. I'll go anywhere. That's why I just go everywhere after being on road. And Sean yeah. Paul's dad, he showed me the roads. I didn't know the roads. Mm -hmm. So he showed, he took me around Jamaica. He mm -hmm. was driving. Mm -hmm. So he drove, like literally showed me everywhere. We had a, we had a good time. Like yeah. went to different clubs. The first time I performed in Asylum, which, okay, so the first song I ever recorded, he took me to Mixing Lab Studio, Sean yeah. Paul's dad. Yeah. He introduced me to Roy Francis. Yeah. I became very good friends with Roy Francis. Mm. I ended up being part, I ended up hanging, that studio ended up being my home, you know, and like, they woke, mm. Roy welcomed me so much and everyone around the studio mm. and that's where I met Lexus, that's where I met Elephant Man, that's where I met yeah. all of these great artists. Okay. In Mixing Lab, because it's the mm. hub. It's the hub where Bounty everyone's... Killer, you see, pull up. Beanie Man, anyone's going to pull up at any minute. This is a big studio, big car park, yeah. and you'll see any artist at any time pull up. It's like a hub. It's one of the major studios. Yeah. It's an amazing studio as well to record at. You know what I mean? The sound in there is fucking amazing. Yeah. Like Shaggy does his, his music there. Like, they've got plaques the on the wall artists. for Shaggy. Yeah. Massive board. It's, it's crazy. The sound in there is top. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a great place. It's like, it's an it's a inspiring place. Yeah. The, you're just in the studio yard writing bars, waiting for producers to come. Them, them times you've got to wait for producers to pull up and impress him in the studio. He'll play the rhythm in the car. Yeah. Impress him in the studio yard, and then yeah. they say, "All right, come," and they will have it on yeah. two-inch tape, and, and they'll then, take you in the studio. Cause... And then you go and record it. Yeah, and he and he'll be the on the producer, so the yeah. producer's paying for everything. So I never yeah. paid for a studio session in Jamaica. It was always a producer. Okay. That, yeah, that they want you to jump on their yeah. on their rhythm or something, can it? But pertaining to Garth, Garth, um, 
he, he showed, he introduced me to a lot of places like Mixing Lab and here and everywhere. And once he introduced me, I, I, I could sort of step on my own two feet, if that makes sense. Because yeah. it's not like he wanted to be the manager. Exactly. Yeah. He just wanted to show me. Yeah, he just wanted to show me. He wanted me to make it and give me yeah. as much help as he could. And then, yeah. and then I learned so much that. Yeah. You, do you that, understand that you can actually go and do this thing on your own? Yes. So, <laughs> what's it called? Yeah, because... And obviously kept the link with him. He was always happy to see yeah. the progress and then he see me getting booked for Sting and stuff like that. That's and what I'm saying. How did that come... What did you do first? That, um, Vibes Cartel couldn't you? But you see Vibes Cartel, was he... He was Vibes Cartel, in it? But yeah. he wasn't... Was he as big as... No. You know what I'm saying, innit? He, he, but, like, but people knew he was on his way. Yeah, it was his He's, first year of... The, the, the first stage show I did with him on the roof. Yeah. That was his first year of him on his way. On his that way. was been the whole Jamaica yeah. realised we got a star here. Yeah. And he's going to be big. But yeah. he was just born. Yeah. So he was a star just born at that point. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we both... His first thing, if I, if I remember correctly, my, my first thing is his first thing. Okay. So we yeah, we kind of both... Don't, don't start it. We, we were both... We both was entering the industry. Yeah. I think he was around it a bit longer than me because he was in Jamaica and he was think, writing for Killer or he was around it. Yeah. In some what some what form, but it was because he's from Portmore. Yeah. Them days the business was a bit segregated, so Portmore artists didn't always come to Kingston. The main studios are in Kingston, and yeah. if you didn't have a link and this yeah, and that, yeah. and it was a bit more political. Yeah. So maybe Cartel, it took him a little bit more time to actually get to the studios yeah. in Kingston then, then. to start recording. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so that's why yeah, he yeah, was yeah. probably he's got, around he's got Portmore. Travel. Yeah, yeah. Right. Down there doing it, but he yeah. got the links there. Exactly. So it was just a time where he got the links and he finally got in there to do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So how did the, um, the Sting come about then? Because that's like massive. Sting's crazy, yeah. Sting that's was a dream massive. country. It was unbelievable. So like, um, after Sean, Paul's father, managing me, and, I'm got, and, and I've learned the roles now, he took me to the first time, oh, it's called Black Rat, R.I.P., he took me to the first show I performed in Asylum. He actually took me on stage and told the artist Black to give me the mic and let me perform. That's how much he did for me. When I met Lexus, Lexus started. Lexus was the hottest artist in Jamaica at the time. Yeah. One of the hottest. He was bare hit songs, in demand, mm -hmm. stage shows seven days a week. Lexus took me under his wing. Mm -hmm. And then Lexus started taking me. I only knew mixing that. Mm -hmm. Lexus started taking me to all the studios. Yeah. And he was in demand. So he's going in to record, and he's going in the studio saying, record Tug of War first. Yeah. To big producers. Yeah. So I start meeting all the different producers in Jamaica. Yeah. Steely and Cleavy, R.I.P. Steely. He's like, yeah. he, courtesy Alexis. Big, that's why I never forget yeah. Mr. Lex. He, he, he did that for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he, and he was performing. Everywhere he performed, he'd take me up on stage with him. Yeah. And he was performing seven days a week. Yeah, Sometimes two, three shows a day. Yeah. And he took me under... He had a... His crew was called CP Inc. because his real name is Christopher Palmer. Yeah. And it was me, him, and two other guys from Seaview Gardens, one called Most Wanted and Meanest. Mm. So all four of us were in the like crew. Yeah. You get me? And we was um, doing loads of shows and going to studio. Like, we go like four or five studios a day. Yeah. And we was in the streets for like a long time. We was, mm. we was working together, yeah. you know? And then I, I started progressing. To the sense where I didn't need to be. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, when I, by the time I got booked for Sting, so Gaddafi started managing me after Sean Paul, Big Up Gaddafi. Mm. Gaddafi produced my first record up there, one of my first records, was well, second record after Roy, called Real Fugs. And then we put it out on vinyl and he got it played on Irie FM and I was getting played on the radio in Jamaica. And he was taking me to some shows because he was. Mm. Gaddafi is like the Don King of Dancehall. Yeah. That's the best way to describe Gaddafi. I said it to him the other day on the phone and he laughed because he knows it's true. He's the Don King of Dancehall. So he, he's very connected. He's a great producer and he knows everybody. And it, it, if he believes in something, he's going to make something happen. He believed in me. Yeah. And he was taking me to the shows. And the day I wrote the song, Mina Banya Bot Me Anya, we yeah, to the farm. Yeah, yeah. It was election going on in Jamaica. Yeah. And Edward Siaga, the white man, yeah. Prime Minister from, he was doing a speech on the radio, live. Mm. And I'm driving with Gaddafi. Gaddafi's driving. My car had a rental and Gaddafi was driving it because I didn't know the roads that well yet. Yeah. So I'm in the passenger seat. Gaddafi's driving. Edward Siaga's on the radio giving his speech. In the middle of his speech, Edward, Edward Siaga goes, Me not born ya, but me on ya. Mm. Yeah. And Gaddafi jumps up and says, Tuggy, that's you. Mm. That's a lyric for you. 
So yeah. I start riding in the car straight away. He said, Me not born here, but me yeah. on ya. Yeah. Yeah. Request to the farmer. They were plot the cho cho, yabba di ba da da. Tell me that they were speaking the agri marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. Eight bars. Bang. That same night, he takes me to a show on Marketplace. About 5,000 people called Fire 2000, and he got me on stage. And I performed one song, and, they, and I got a big forward, and they let me perform another song. Mm. And I got like an encore, and Nuffy was the host of the show. And I performed that. See, I've done the eight bars. I only had eight bars yeah, in that yeah. song that I wrote. Yeah, yeah. And I performed that, and it fucked up the place. Yeah. Guess who's in the crowd? Oh. Len. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He does sting in it. Len yeah. is in the crowd. Yeah, so he's seeing it firsthand. I'm on the... See, I got my... I think I performed three songs. Mm. Third one, the crowd went crazy. And like now he's pushing me up, pushing me upstairs. Yeah, that's what you get from him. You know, like he fucked you up so much. Like, like, mm. I weren't booked. It was like yeah, they squeezed yeah, me in a set. Yeah. yeah. Performed like two, three songs. Yeah. And I got a massive response. Mm. And he's like, hey, yo, if you want, and he's like, he said, yo, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. If you want to see him any more of him, catch him at Sting. That's what Nuffy said when yeah. he's okay, yeah, taking yeah. me off the stage. Yeah. After I fucked the place up. Because he gave me an encore, yeah. brought me back on. Then he, because he's controlling the stage. He's the MC. He's talking yeah. it. So he let me get the two forward. Then yeah. when I'm walking down, I see Gaddafi at the bottom of the stairs jumping up like that. <laughs> like we won the World Cup. Yeah. yeah. And I'm looking at, and I heard Nuffy say, yeah, if you want to see him, see, catch him at Sting. And I was yeah. like, I thought I heard wrong, bro. Yeah. I thought, nah, he's, that's banter. Yeah. He ain't serious. He's winding the crowd up. Yeah. What Sting? Yeah. Who the fuck are you talking about? It's catch him at Sting. Mm. I don't know what a soul going on so fast. I'm literally coming yeah. to the stage, my man saying you to the whole crowd, if yeah. you want to see any more of him, catch him at Sting. Yeah. I'm like, this guy's trying to shit and always talking about. I walk I go to the walk down the there's a big stage. I go to walk down the stage, God he's jumping up and down at the bottom. Mm. He takes me through the whole crowd. Mm. Big crowd, thousands of people. He drags me through. I remember him like taking me, he's moving fast through this crowd, boy. Man, I push over people. Finally got to like the, the the back of the venue, no diddy. Leng with about his whole crew around him, bare policeman there on him. Protection, da, 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 da. He takes me up to Leng and says, Yo, you're bad you come to my office tomorrow. Yeah, that's uh, it. That's it. That's it. That was it. That was the story. They went to the office tomorrow. He said he wanted to put me on sting. He said, I need a photo or you want you on sting. That's it. It's just a simple He asked word. for a photo. I went to the office, he said, I need a photo or want you on sting. And I went and done my first photo shoot in Kingston. And luckily at the time I knew a, a photographer. Mm. So we went and done a little photo shoot, got the pictures done, gave Leng the picture. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> history, history. Just history. History. Because them like them footages, like you can put that up tomorrow and that's still a sellers. Mm. It's still like for anyone that didn't know, it's still Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you ain't done that. Do you get what I'm saying, innit? Yeah, and it yeah. shows, it's a testament to what you have done yeah. and how long you've been here yeah. and the magnitude of stuff that you've done. It's not even, it's international. It's actually is in the next country as well, as well as England. There's a whole run in England as well. Yeah, yeah. But let me give you a yeah. question, cuz, yeah? Yeah. It's like a scenario-based one, yeah? And you know, yeah, go, go ahead. Go on, go on. Did you have something I was just going to say, just like, I, I, made, I made a crazy, like, could you imagine, like, within three months of me, Getting released to prison. Yeah, I got booked for Sting. That's what I'm saying. Because I, 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 I really, I felt I let my family down in a sense. Yeah. Getting nicked. I felt I let myself down. I mm. felt I let everyone down. Yeah. I felt like, mm. what am I doing? Trying to be Tony Montana or weed, in Hackney. Mm. I felt like, this is this is gonna go wrong at one time. It was always gonna go wrong. Yeah. What I was doing at the at the size I was doing it and yeah. trying to live like the, selling weed like a wild ass like that it was always mm. gonna go wrong. Mm. So it was that was like my calling to Tuggy. You can make something of yourself. Yeah. So I felt Jamaica was no longer a holiday for me. Mm. Jamaica was no longer. It was a mission. I didn't mm. feel like I even had that long because I know anything mm. can go wrong in England at any time, which it did, mm. and I have to go back. So I felt like I'm under pressure. I've got to find a hit song. I've got to make a momentum. I've got to get mm. some kind of record. Deal. I need to get dough to get me out of the life that I was in. Cause I don't want to go back to that life. I've just come out of Spanish Town. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So like, it was very important to me and to make mm. for my mother and father to make my, my mother and father proud. Yeah, and you know, not that I'm turning to some fucking drug dealer, fucking 
You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. and I can make something of myself now. And so it was like pressure under me to do it for everyone. Yeah. So I felt like like what me I do out there is like mm. every time I went on stage, it's like I, I said to my I couldn't afford to flop. Mm. I can't afford to, this to go. It's ain't even a joke to me. I can't afford mm. this to go. And it's the same with me now. Mm. That's why I'm, that's how I'm program how I program and I move how I move because I, I look at it like, I can't afford for this not to work. Mm. I can't afford for tug of war mm -hmm. not to work, mm. and that's it. Up to now, mm. from then that's till the now. Mentality and stuff. Yeah. All right, well, cuz listen, yeah. um, it's like a scenario based one, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's like. 2019 times, yeah? Mm -hmm. You're not tug of war, but you're still an artist. You're on the come up. You're, no, you're tug of war now, just starting. Not tug of war, that's got all the history. Right. Just coming into the game with the same passion as back then, yeah? Right. Okay. Um, you need a radio freestyle, yeah? Yeah. You get two messages. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the, these, um, they both want you to come on their shows, but they also say to you, <coughs> I can help you out on your path into this music. I heard your bars, sick, I want you to come and work with me, innit? One of them's Shawnee B, yeah? And the other one's Ras Kwame. Which show are you gonna go on? None of them. None of them? None of them. I was, I was gonna say why, but it's just for the... I'll go, well, if I'm paid. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking... Depends you're money. saying tug of war. Okay. Listen to the question. Oh, sorry. This is a scenario. Yeah. This is not tug of war. Right. I'm talking about tug of war as in oh. brand new. <coughs> you ain't even got a history. You're just starting now, this yeah. week. Yeah. Who would I pick out of them two? Yeah. Which show would you go on? But I'm a I'm new artist, but am I allowed to have the knowledge of tug of war or anything? No. Oh, I'm brand new. You're brand new. This has nothing to do with tug of war. I'm dance floor. You, and you're doing dance hall, and these guys, there's probably other DJs that you could have probably took apart, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just put these it's two. Not, it's, I, I'm going to be totally honest with you. It's no disrespect to the two names yeah. you, you pay me, but um, you picked two bad names for me to pick against. Because I, I actually know Raz Kwame, like big yeah. Raz Kwame. But um, as, to, as and Shawnee B, he's never showed me any love. So I can't, it's hard for me to speak so then, like I don't means, know. You know what that means, what you just said now? Go on. That means that if you was a new artist and yeah. you heard the two of them, you would more than likely be thinking, you know what, Ross Kwame, he seems like all right. You, I'd like, go to Ross Kwame. You wouldn't even have I'd history. Ras, Ras. You wouldn't even have history. Right, Ras, not, Ras Kwame. You, they understand Kwame, just Ras for Kwame. the sake of the content. For Ras the Kwame, because he's, he's, been, he's, been he's been around on the radio longer than Shawnee B and he's probably got a bigger audience than Shawnee B. So Ras Kwame. Okay, cool. So, what's it called? You go on this show, 100% mm. homegrown, this does well. Mm. Everyone knows who you are now. So, cool. He even mentions to you, you know what, I can help you with a booking, you know, like there's some people been speaking to me about you. So, your first big performance could possibly be A, right. Sumfest in Montego Bay, right. yeah? 2019, it would have had people like Spice, Beris Hammond, Idonia, Bounty and Beanie. But also on the same day in England, wireless. Ooh. Finsbury Park. Am I a dancer artist? Yeah. You, you have a. You've got, I've got, I would have to go for Sunfest. Mm. As a dancer artist. Yeah. Even though wireless is my hometown. Yeah. Well, no. And wireless is prob I, I don't even know which one's the bigger event because Sunfest is a massive event. Sunfest is like massive. a. They're both massive. They're, they're both, both massive. like. Something like five day event. Yeah, I think for the experience of if at that at that time, if yeah. I'm a new artist, yeah, I'd want to go something just to experience it. Yeah, rather than go Finsley Park. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you go where we going? Monty yeah. go Bay or Finsley Park? Alright, cool. Yeah. Alright. Um. So you got all you got a hit song on the road. You're doing your thing that now. Like artists are hollering at you, saying, "Boom!" Come. Still 2019. Yeah. Right. So they're hollering at you now. They're saying, you know what, I want you, can you jump on, you know them ones, labels are saying, can, we need you to jump on this. Right. So you have a choice now. Right. So they present to you two songs. Okay. Yeah? The first song is 
coffee, toast, yeah. And at the time, that had 235 million views, yeah. So they would have offered you the remix. Big song. And then Popcorn Family, which had 79 million. Which song, which so remix are you going to do? First of all... No, I'm just putting the stats out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wouldn't care about the stats. I'd go for the song. I, bo I love both songs. Bruh. I, I think I'd go with Family Popcorn. Yeah. Musically. I think it might... Resonates then, a bit more. They're both big tunes. They're both though. big tunes. The thing is, the, the, the whole rhythm, I can see that would, I could work with that. I could see, I'd like to do both. It's a hard one. It's, it's a hard, the, it's a, it's you, a hard only, one. you know what I'm saying? Like, they both, yeah, they're deadline both. day is like, you know what I mean? It's right now. So I've got to pick one of them. You've got to pick one of them. Family. Family. I think most people would have, even though they're both big, but family yeah. saying that can family, like, yeah. I think that still gets played now. I think it'd be a bit everyone's... more personal. It gets, yeah, I think, I just did think about how legendary it still is now as well. It's turned into an anthem. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, man. Yeah. Definitely, man. Yeah, 100%. Biggest, biggest Toast is as well. Yeah, if you got coffee, Toast is massive. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Um, what would you say is your. Because you see, like, in the UK, you, you've had clashes and stuff, in it. Like, well, mm. that's what um, dance hall's based off, in it. Like, Yeah, it was. I think now... I think that thing's kind of... The whole mentality of, of artists now... Everything, yeah, I not so much now. You don't really yeah. hear it now, no, it? But no. at one point, you know what I mean? Yeah. To, like, to, to keep up with <coughs> what was going on in the yeah, yard yeah, settings. Yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. like... So what would you say is your biggest clash? Even though I know you, because mm. I know you, I know you've killed all of them. Well, we're not even talking about that. Yeah. Who's been the... The biggest clash. The, the biggest who, clash or your, your most big, worthiest opponent. I've got to go with someone who actually give me... You actually fought back. Yeah. Was um, Fowley Dan. Fowley Dan. Yeah. Because Fowley, I, I'd say that with Fowley because even though I... He knows I got the better of him all the time, but he never... Mm. He, he, he never mm. stopped. Yeah, he, he kept never on making stopped. the tunes. He never stopped. Chat, he kept. But... He says, "If it's war, it's war." Yeah. You know, he was the biggest competitor. Like he was yeah. a competitor that would. Yeah. As I'd blink, he'd have another disc record out for me. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. Like, it, it, okay, so he's bringing the records out. Yeah. As who, well, so I've got to talk about who's got who's done the most tug of war disc record. <laughs> yeah, Fowley Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got Fowley, man. Yeah. It's Frederick. It's nice yeah. because we, we're, we're friends now. Yeah. You, you just, uh, yeah. We was always friends. We was always family. That, I think that's see, why we was able to do it. That's what I'm saying. See, um, because we didn't overtake stuff. Even yeah. when we said fucked up shit about each other, mm -hmm. I said bad stuff about him on record. He said, but we never took it too personal because we was, mm -hmm. we know yeah. we're brothers, really. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? But that's sticky with it, in general. It's hard to um to keep the balance. And keep stuff, that balance because I think that's why I just, that's why I have to big up Fowley for that because we had the longevity. He, we the best back and forth, and in Demar we made history at Stratford Rex. So we made we put UK Clash on the map. Okay. Because you okay. know, remember the Stratford Rex dance where he grabbed yeah. the mic out, man, and everything. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that was him, innit? That okay. was him, and that's viral before viral. Okay. If you yeah. think about it, yeah, 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 that yeah, is yeah, viral yeah, yeah, before yeah, yeah. viral. I remember that now as well. Because that moment lives up to today. Like when they talk about UK dance or history, they talk yeah. about that. Yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah. What's it called, isn't it? And, and the, that was 2008. Yeah, yeah, and we, yeah, yeah. And we continued. That was the start of us warring. Okay. And that so war went up to, we warred for like 10, maybe 12, 30. We warred up to like 2020, maybe. Like, you know, Con continuous. Like, continue, like, not not like hardcore, but like... like, like every it, now and it again. Was, it was still yeah. subliminal, like, even if it was yeah. a subliminal or whatever. We, like, yeah. we, he was, there was a stage where we was back and mm. forth a lot and, and I entertained it because it was my friend and but it was fun. It, it, and it was good for dance. So we was getting yeah. book, we got bookings. Bookings off of For it, yeah. yeah, like yeah I remember yeah. us getting bookings to go for... The, we got bookings for it and everything. So who else was doing... You know what I'm saying, innit? Like, you know, like, you, I, mm. there wasn't many competitors, in it. But That's what I'm saying. I was talking to Fowley about it the other day. That's why when we see the one or two little people try to ever pop up and do it, we look at it like, are you trying to do what me, me and you have been doing? Like, from they, they never even come close to what we was doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you. Yeah. They never come close to it. No, 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 no. Well, the, the level of it or the, the, you know what I'm saying? The amount of 
tracks yeah. you when you're on someone. So yeah. Like, I, what's that, what's his name? I can't remember. And the understanding of. I can't remember his name. There's that, but you know, like once mm. over the years, when because when I hear you on the rap, I listen to you on the rap. Mm. But some, sometimes you, when you're doing the the bashment thing, I know, yeah, boom, you're gonna be dissing someone. Do you understand what I'm saying in it? So it, you usually introduce me to these new guys. Yeah, yeah. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Stylo never asked. Oh, Stylo, that's Stylo, it. Stylo, yeah. Stylo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just did do the toilet paper thing with yeah. him, Yeah, I left it. I left did it. Did he? Did he? What's it called? Was he like? He he he's a loads of subliminals. He's, he's like, like a sub. He dropped yeah. subliminals or something. Yeah. Yeah. But he, would you say he was a worthy opponent? Honestly. Absolutely. It's like in it. Else you wouldn't even. You know what I mean in it. Like else you wouldn't even. Um, Absolutely. Challenge these guys, if you get what I'm saying, or even like entertain if they chat shit or whatever, innit? I look back at some of the diss tracks I did, and I, some of them, even though some of them got big, I was like, oh, I wish I never did that, because that was their biggest moment. Yeah. I don't, uh, it's the point. I'm helping you out. Yeah. If I'm giving you yeah, your yeah, biggest you moment. You need to have something to bring to yeah. the table. If I'm to, giving you called? your biggest moment, then it's useless. Mm. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Has to be something <coughs> that we can both kind of Foul generate. Still, even though you, you, where, how, Mm. However, the Fowley Doug Ward thing, he still stood his own. Yeah. Stood in the business as a solo artist. Yeah. And continued and still does it today and does great things. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah of course. But like, it, um, you know, it's, it's a longevity thing as well. Yeah. It's a longevity thing. And you know, it's, not everyone's built for that. Yeah. Yeah, st definitely. St you asked if Tyler was a comparison. Absolutely. Because um, He's talented. He's, he's a great artist. Mm -hmm. I have nothing like I, I would mm -hmm. go for like that's a bit that's a yeah, yeah. he was always he was the now he's not, but at the mm -hmm. time he was on top of the game. So you kinda when you're trying to make it in the game, you always want to shoot at the top dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah, I think yeah. you're doing good, oh, I'm gonna go for you. Yeah, in that genre in that of genre, that's, 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 that's how, how you do it. Yeah. That's how it works. That's how it works. Yeah, I don't, other than that, it's a brethren thing. Yeah. Like with other other yeah. foully and something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah, other yeah. than that, it wasn't even worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, you're yeah, not yeah, getting yeah. nothing out of it. Because you're already like bigger than the names exactly. of the people that's coming to clash if exactly. they're not bringing something to the no, table. No, you're doing them a favour. Because at that sense. point you, you at that point, even when you win you lose. Yeah. Because you can win musically, but they got their... They, they've they, gathered your fans. They've, they've just well, taken, they've, taken they're your their fans. Moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're their moment. Your, yeah, which yeah. they wanted. They, your fans now yeah. love them as well, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. If you can't goes, steal some yeah. of their fans, and yeah. it's like, okay, we share. So I don't, I don't regret it. any of them I did, but it's like, it's just how it goes. You live and learn. You know and and it's, a, it's in the moment you get caught. With a distract, you get caught in the moment. But see, like how you said, when you always aim at the top, yeah, it makes sense. See, before, yeah, there was that was that white on white crime. Mm -hmm. That didn't make sense to me, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it made sense why they would all. You know what I'm saying, isn't it? Yeah. Like why it would be try to like packaged as something for mm -hmm. us to all watch. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah. The name alone and, in, entices you. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that man, and that thing is is fun until everyone. See, when it becomes the cut. See, that's what um, it was fun until it become a color thing. Yeah, yeah. Because like we've been talking it about my whole history and everything. Yeah. And I've come way too far to be compared to this. Yeah, I yeah. can't, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not, you know, I can't. Yeah. can't put me in I that. Can't. Yeah. I can't. I wouldn't, you know what, I couldn't. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't be, I wouldn't be being true to myself. Yeah. Because I've never stood for yeah, that it's either. Like it's and I've never. gimmick and that. Man. Yeah. And I don't come from that, bro. You know that. Like Do you get what I'm saying? It, it's, a, it's a gimmick thing. I reckon thing. if they called it something else, it might have felt a yeah. bit. A bit more, do you know what I mean? In it, like white on white crime. It's yeah, like, I think that whole that it's, it was silly. It was silly if you ask me because a lot of the people that got involved, they were only get involved because what you got to compare. If if the only listen, let me say this: if the only thing you got to compare with me is your complexion, mm -hmm. forget it. And yeah. that's what it boils down to. Even when yeah, you say yeah. white on white compare crime, compare some lyrics or something, or compare com some like. Fans or compare some like accolades, some accolades or something in it. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Because I'm... I don't work so hard doing this whole to be compared to someone because he's the same color as me. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's not right. Yeah, yeah, because I've done too much and I don't. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I understand it. Yeah. Do I understand it? Hell yeah. Because yeah. remember, you said you aim for the top. So yeah, they're 
but you, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But that yeah, no, it's, I understand. It's, exactly. it's good you, when see, man's like, I, like you know what I'm saying? We, isn't it? we like, never come. See what happened over the years. I told, I tell you about my story from when yeah. I was no one. Yeah. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I became someone. Yeah. I became the top dog. So yeah, you guys, yeah, so, so they're gonna be shooting right. at you. They're gonna be trying to. You say, so it comes with the territory. <laughs> yeah. It comes with the territory. You got to say even <laughs> yeah. like what, what, like even and I'm just and you know what it's joke because. The great thing about my career is, is that I still feel brand new. It's like, yeah. I'm getting bigger and bigger every minute. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I'm bigger like... I know. I'm bigger, I'm bigger today than I was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and I tomorrow, I'm going to be even bigger. So it's crazy. It's like, I feel like a whole reborn artist. So like, to have this whole conversation with you now yeah. about this whole history I've had. Yeah. And it's like, it's still That's... in the making. It's like, it's crazy. It's like, we're going to have to do this podcast again in a year's time. Yeah, to catch there's, up. There's, there's what's it called? There's bare stuff yeah. that's even going. Like, because yeah. it's the golden era, so yeah. we're just talking about the that. golden era. But of there's course. still yeah, yeah. stuff like, yeah. see, like, the, like what you're doing now. Like, you could be giving us like some sort of entertainment value yeah. where you're just giving us a skit, yeah. and we got you like dropping a track every day, yeah. like or a video. Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. so you're doing so many stuff things now you've got a podcast going mm -hmm. on. Do you get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's mm -hmm. like actually unlimited. But we're not even here to talk about that. Really, no. we're still. No, no, ones. We're yeah. talking about like the the, the foundational bricks that's mm. got you to do what you're doing. Yeah, now. yeah. That's real. why like all of them clashes when I talk <laughs> about them. It's like yeah, I remember them. Yeah. But it's like now clashes don't even happen anymore. It just seems like no. people are trying to clash you. Yeah. But they're clashing you through the form of podcasts yeah. now. It's like a different way of well, clashing. You know, I tell you what it is. Uh, uh, you know, I was I said to someone the other day. <laughs> you know, I said to someone the other day. The tug of war. That was making no money. Mm. It's different to the tug of war that makes money. <laughs> I don't do the same things. Yeah. When you, you see, you see the, um, you see like you go back through the history and, mm. and, and might see me this. You can find tracks where I've dissed the whole fucking industry. Yeah. Motherfucker, I was hungry. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need to do that. No more. They go. I was hungry. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Like I'm, the, I'm just everybody. Yeah. So like when I hear people this, I've got to expect it. Yeah, yeah, you know, of course, of course. I can't diss the fucking world and its girl and expect not to get no yeah. heat, no smoke back. Yeah. It comes with the territory. Yeah. But the, the tug of war that was starving mm. hungry doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't <laughs> <laughs> He's not so hungry. Yeah. Oh, God, Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, it's too new. So you do like it's a, so it's a girlfriend, it's a yeah. it's a whole <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Totally so it's busy. like it's 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 all you know what I mean. So even like no, I know they got who away. I give even airtime now it matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who I give airtime now it matters. Yeah, they got away. They just got away. They got away. Some will never get. It. <laughs> it's too expensive. Yeah, they got away. They it's got not cheap cut. no more. Yeah. No, I hear that. Like, like your foundation, you're my brother. That's what I'm saying. So man. like I'm even real right, right now, it's like, really like do you know what I'm saying? Like. It's a two different tug of wars. Now, that tug of war was hungry. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? In, in, now, man's in a Things have changed. We're doing good. Yeah. We'll give thanks. We'll give thanks. All right. But listen to this, though, cuz, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, I've just got a signal. Yeah. So, you know what? See this, <coughs> we haven't even got into half of what I've No, no, on. for real. But guess what man's going to do? Man's going to, like, wrap it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do a part two. Mm -hmm. Because, like... You're like an encyclopedia from or of like history and do you know what I mean? But I feel like this, how long is it? Two hours? It's two hours of like, do you get what I'm saying in it? Yeah, like, yeah. so I'm going to wrap it up, give it to them like that, let them dissect that. We're going to, you're going to show me the opus thing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, shit, not opus, the, the low, the, the, yeah. grow, the next thing, whatever. Yeah. Rewind that. But yeah. you, you're going to show me the thing and then man's just going to flood them. Yeah, exactly. With all of the gems from this. Yeah. Yeah. You know what Perfect. I mean? Perfect. So, like, all right, well, listen. Amazing. It's your boy, Hu and Tizzy. Done them. With? Tuggy, Tuggy. Hey, hey! <laughs> what well, in the million? Yeah. And it's the Golden Era UK Rap Podcast. Until next time. Done now, bless up. Golden Era in the building. Them not nah swing no foot. Shit. Them not nah swing no toe now. I'm a fungal infection. They put on no toe. <laughs> yeah. We all got dreams that we gotta pursue. I mean, we all got dreams that we gotta believe in. I mean, we all got targets that we gotta achieve. 
So how can I rest when I got family to feed? I mean, I mean with my intuition, I'll make wise decision. I'll navigate the chaos and avoid collision. Stick to the program and follow my vision. I'm just trying to keep it real. I got a legacy to build. It's Yo, real. I do.